we face a crisis in England today about our social care provision. We have an ageing population, so more people need that help and support when they're frail and vulnerable. And what we're finding is local authorities who are strapped for cash, saying they're not getting enough money from central government, are withdrawing those services at a time of great need. So what can we do to help ourselves if we don't want our homes to be sold? Well, we could downsize. Plenty of people do that as they get older. But where to downsize to? New Oscott is a purpose-built retirement village where you can own or rent your own home and know you will never have to move again because there's both medical and social care on site. This £37 million development is a joint enterprise between Birmingham Council, a housing association and a charity. Today, it's the official opening. I'm joining Olive and Chris Quinn on a tour of what's on offer. They've signed up already and reserved a two-bedroom flat. Rachel's going to get me organised and get me back on my feet. Oh, God. Husband Chris helps Olive cope with her arthritis. You're never going to keep Olive dumped on a sofa, are you? I mean, no, no, there's no way. And I think if, they, if she'd stayed dumped on the sofa, she, she would have deteriorated, she would have deteriorated. She would have done, yeah. and she'd have got depressed. Yeah. This distraction. Keeping fit matters more and more as you get older. Keeps your mind alert, too. That's what's on offer here. We knew this is what we wanted. We weren't getting any younger. So we thought, right, this is for us. Did Moving into a community, a friendly community, lots of friends, social life. The flat cost Chris and Olive just under £190,000. Living here means they'll avoid costly residential care and can leave money to their family. Any increase in the flat's value when it's eventually sold will go back into the development. So you've got a little nest egg that's going yes. to see you through. Egg, yes, yeah. we've dragged everything, a bit of finances from here, there and everywhere that we could lay our hands on. There's a staff of 98 people on call 24 hours a day. This is a very large-scale enterprise, very costly. What's the idea? Is it to make money? No, the vision is all about that there ought to be a better way of finding housing with care in the same place for people as they get into later life. And the models that were around 20 or 30 years ago of either sheltered housing with, with a scheme manager on site or a residential care home where you might end up sharing a room, neither of those were working for people. What we've got here is, is good, independent accommodation. Jean Agnew is another resident. She's already moved in. She didn't own any property of her own, but she swapped her three-bedroom council house for a one-bedroom rented flat. I came from a place where there were a lot of youths um, and they were drinking and they used to pass my house nearly every night and I was frightened. Um, although I'm quite uh, an outgoing person, I was still frightened being on my own. But uh, here, you know, I lie, lie, lie awake at night thinking how secure I am and how safe. When we're younger, we hope for an old age that will be rich in leisure and friendship. Jean has found them both here, where she'll spend the rest of her life. It's giving her a new sense of optimism. That's the sort of old age we should all aspire to. I won't go into a nursing home, I won't go into... This is everything I want for when I'm older and my, my health has deteriorated, is here. So this is another piece of mind that, I, that I've got. That's really important. It, it? it is, yeah, and I think really it's going to prolong my life because you, you, you feel the peace of mind, don't you, and, and the security. <laughs> Olive and Chris are saying goodbye to their old home after 31 happy years. Yes, they've sold it to pay for their flat and their old age. But for them, there are no regrets. Why can't it be like this for more of us? We're moving up. We're moving again. Moving to the village. Yeah. Which is a dream. Yeah. yeah. That's even more so. A <laughs> luxurious dream. Yeah. So we've been lucky. Mm. Do you use your stuff? 
because I'm just about creased now. Oh, that's it. Made it. Made it. Right, I lock up. Bye bye. Bye bye, 23. What can that's I do? It. Off we go. Let's make a move. New life. Here we go. Here we go for our new life. Goodbye, the old. Hello, the new. That's it, isn't it? Chris and Olive have found the ideal solution for them and count themselves among the lucky ones. Almost 2,000 people were interested in fewer than 300 homes. All hours. All hours. At last. <laughs> Will more of us end our days in places like this? With only around 500 similar schemes across the UK, they're still a rarity. Or are they perhaps too exclusively old for some? A citadel of the old cut off from the outside world. I've got myself a high old nice new kitchen. Yeah. More up to date than I've got a home. And as for a dishwasher, love, you've lost your job. <laughs> <laughs> we just haven't bought an apartment. We've bought into a way of life. There's entertainment, anybody, whatever you're interested in, it's going on downstairs. It does have an advantage, especially as people get older. No one to care for them. They end up in homes, they sit round four walls, and that's it, that's their life. That is not going to happen here. If you look at where the resources are in the system, uh, the bulk of them are in hospitals and care homes. We need to get a better balance of where those services are so that people can be offered real choice. You know, we're now living in a very complex world, changing family structures, increasing numbers of people, different expectations, and we're really trying to meet 21st century needs with a, with a 1940s uh, system, and it's not working. I'm 77 now, and I'm pleased that I'm still working. Plans to change the default retirement age mean that we can all work longer, and many of us want to. We like the money, we like the independence. And baby boomers especially are not going to be patronised and told that it's time to sit in the corner and keep taking your tablets. Take a good look. We'll all end up in here one day the way it's going. The Verona Elder Care Unit PLC. I've arrived at the Bristol Old Vic to see their take on Shakespeare's tragedy Romeo and Juliet. It was the nightingale and not the lark that pierced the fearful hollow. In this version, the star-crossed lovers are not love-struck teenagers, but pensioners. Sean Phillips, with her then-husband Peter O'Toole, was a glamorous figure in those swinging 60s. Romeo is played by Michael Byrne, who, at the age of 66, is, like co-star Sean, still working. It does question how you deal with old people. How much freedom do you allow them? Do you, what expectations do you have of old people? And that's something we all have to think about a lot now. Is it shocking when two old people fall in love? How do we feel about that? What other freedoms should we be giving old people that we don't give them at the moment? What are our expectations? The cast did the research for their roles, drawing on personal experience of their own families. Can you envisage going into a home yourself? No, I can't. I have to say I can't, but I think nobody can envisage that. I don't think any... And my mother definitely never had that. She didn't go into a home until she was 90 anyway, but, and, and was working up until that moment. Have not saint lips and holy palm. People over pension age made up 3% of the workforce in the 90s. Today, it's 5%. Many need the money. The current old age pension is derisory, just under £98 a week. Saints, do not mind. I'm fortunate enough to have a job that you can go on doing until you die, and therefore you can suddenly come across Romeo. So that changes, doesn't it? It changes everything. Suddenly you're, you're playing something that should have finished when you were 20, and, you, you, and that's wonderful, but not everybody else has that. I'm noticing a big difference from how things used to be. More old people, of course, and many are thoroughly upbeat about life. If you've got a decent pension, why not? Monthly dances at the Royal Opera House London for those who can afford it. But there are loads of other events up and down the country. There was a time when old began at 50. Not anymore. The sofa was off again. Oh, I certainly thought over 50 was old, really. Whereas now, a 50-year-old looks pretty young. 
Well, I always remember when my mother reached 50, I said, you're now half a hundred, and I thought...